afternoon, everyone. It's 12 noon sharp, so we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you all for joining us. Earlier today, New Jersey Devils Executive Vice President and General Manager Tom Fitzgerald announced that Martin Brodor has officially been named as Executive Vice President Hockey Ops and additionally signed a multi-year contract extension to remain with the organization, which we're incredibly happy to announce earlier. We'll open it up to some questions, starting off with Amanda Stein, NewJerseyDevils.com. I ask that all media please send me a note in the chat, and then I will add your question to the queue. Go ahead, Amanda. Hey, Marty. Um, I'm just wondering, well, first of all, just your excitement now to know that you're going to solely be focusing on hockey and how much that means to you with this organization. Well, I'm definitely excited about the, the opportunity that Tom is giving me here. Uh, obviously, I've been working alongside him for a bit now, uh, but now is more in an official uh, capacity. Um, definitely, you know, with the history I have with this franchise, I'm excited to be part of, of, uh, of the years coming, you know, coming about and, and getting some success here and, and getting back uh, where the Devils are supposed to be. And then it's in, on the winning franchise and uh, we're on our way there. Not there yet, but it's, uh, it's exciting times. One of the things, you know, that we know about athletes is their, you know, their desire to win, that burning desire and being the best they possibly can. When you left the game as a player, did that stay in you? And was that something that getting involved in this capacity is a way of fulfilling? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, when, when you're, or, you know, an ex-athlete or ever, you're, you're still a competitive guy. So it doesn't matter what you do. You play golf, you play anything. You, you want to be competitive. <laughs> Uh, and, and so definitely like being part of franchise, you, you want that to be, uh, to be the same, uh, even though you can't really do the work on the ice, you know, you want to be competitive, you know, we, we're playing against, you know, 31 teams here and, and we want to try to be the best and it, it's hard to do. It's a hard league. Uh, I'm just, you know, I think all, all the guys that, that, that played the game knows exactly what, you know, what I'm talking about. You're, you know, you get excited, you get, you get angry and you, you get get mad you get sad and, and just the emotion but uh when you don't have that it's tough as a hockey player you know so it's nice to, to be back in it thanks Pete thanks Marty thank you thank you Amanda our next question go to Dan Rosen NHL.com Marty I put my camera on for you so uh that's nice thank you man <laughs> uh why now why is this the right move for you right now to to jump in full bore full time into the hockey ops side and why do you want to be involved in scouting? Well, you know, why now is, you know, when I, when I came back to New Jersey three years ago, um, my little one was, you know, nine years old or eight years old or whatever. Now he's getting older. Um, he's so invested in hockey and uh, he, he wants me to do this, you know, and I always was reluctant to kind of go back at it after my three years in, in, in St. Louis to get back full time into hockey. And now I just feel it's the right time. Uh, I think the team, uh, you know, I've, I've been around the team for, for two years and on the hockey side anyway, uh, but I just see a lot of growth. I uh, see, I love what's going on with, with, with the, uh, the way the, the, the hockey operation is set up and I, I want to be part of the solution, you know, just being around. And I think the time was, was perfect for me. How old is the little one now? The little one? Yeah, it'll be, it'll be 13. <laughs> so it's not a little one, but. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Mark. He's, he's probably taller than you, actually. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> Doesn't take much. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Our next question will go to Bruce Beck of NBC. Go ahead, Bruce. Hey, Marty, congrats. Uh, what does it mean to have the Devils back in first place and getting this kind of recognition again? And is that part of the fun of, of being involved with the franchise right now uh hi bruce uh, yeah you know what it's 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 just nice you know just nice um coming to work uh seeing our fans the way they react and you know it's it's long overdue this organization should be on top i mean we we do the right things here and it, it's definitely it's been a few years that it's been really rough on everybody uh, including us the hockey operation you know you kind of try to make moves to try to get better and you didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel and, and it's early, you know, I mean, it's, it's only you know, 12, 13 games in, uh, but we see a lot of good trends that, that we're excited about that we planned on, uh, you know, for, for a few years. And then now it's coming to fruition a little bit. So um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's nice to be part of it. No doubt about that. And Marty is, is devil's hockey in your blood. I know you were away for a few years, but is this where you belong? 
yeah, there's no doubt, no doubt in my mind. It was never a doubt in my mind. Like, I, I, even though I, I still live in St. Louis, I, you know, Jersey is still a big part of my life, you know, and, and hockey in New Jersey, you know, my kids grew up playing hockey here. Uh, I grew up yeah, as a professional in New Jersey. So, you know, everything's all about New Jersey when we're talking about hockey. There's nothing, nothing better. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, Bruce. Our next question will go to Mark Rosenman, Sports Talk New York. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, Mark, thank you. So you did mention St. Louis. Uh, you said, uh, Mark, we're having trouble hearing you. Yeah, we still yeah. can't hear you. We'll switch over. Yeah, Mark, either send me the question in the chat or we'll come back to you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to our next question, Guillaume Lefrancois of La Presse. Yeah, hi. Uh, salut, Martin. Uh, félicitations pour, uh, pour ta promotion. Merci. Uh, so, hey, écoute, je voulais savoir, uh, on, on voit quand même de plus en plus de, de, de joueurs de, de, de ta 30 qui sont dans cette position-là. Je serais curieux de savoir si tu as consulté des gars comme Joe Sakic, comme Brandon Shannon. Euh, c'est dans ton processus qui t'a mené là, à prendre cette, euh, ce, ce, ce poste-là? Euh, ouais, je parlais à, à pas mal tout le monde. Écoute, euh, je suis bien ami avec Doug Armstrong qui, à Saint-Louis qui, qui fait la même chose euh, avec Luc Robitaille à, à Los Angeles, qui, avec des, des, des agents. Tu sais, j'ai tellement de connexions avec toutes les années que j'ai joué. Euh, tu sais, j'ai posé des questions nécessairement. Écoute, moi, je suis ici au New Jersey. C'est ici que j'ai joué toute ma carrière. Puis je suis content d'être capable de, de venir ici puis d'aider l'équipe à, à grandir puis avoir euh, un peu plus de succès qu'on a eu dernièrement parce que c'est... Je veux pas, depuis que je suis parti, c'est pas mal difficile au New Jersey. Fait que j'ai hâte de pouvoir mettre ma main là-dessus puis aider Tom à, à remonter sur le droit chemin. Est-ce que c'est est -ce est difficile de de ne pas trop se mêler, de, 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 de pas trop se mêler. Ben là, ça, ça va devenir dans ton mandat, mais tu sais, de, de laisser le vestiaire, de laisser le vestiaire au gars, puis tout ça, c'est toi qui étais dans des vestiaires pendant 20, 22 ans. Euh, comment, tu, euh, comment, comment, tu gères, euh, comment tu gères ça dans le fond? Là, ton, ton... Euh, bon, je pense que écoute, on, on est une équipe euh, nécessairement que ce soit, euh, ce soit de, le, le côté de l'opération de hockey ou, ou, ou la chambre, les coachs. On fait toute partie de la même équipe. Euh, c'est sûr que c'est difficile de ne pas être là et de, 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 de pomper up les, les joueurs, comme on peut dire. Mais à la fin de la journée, euh, on est tous là pour la même chose, c'est avoir du succès. Que ce, soit, que ce soit les joueurs, que ce soit les entraîneurs, que ce soit euh, les dirigeants, on, 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 est tout dans, on est tout ensemble. Parfait, merci. 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 Our next question will go back to Mark Roseman of Sports Talk Radio New York. Try one more time. How's that, Peter? You got me now? Beautiful. Beautiful. There you go. Hey, there we go, Marty. Marty, <laughs> thanks so much. Uh, two questions. The first is, you know, you had positions in St. Louis and with Team Canada. Uh, how did those two positions help, you know, set the foundation for what you're now doing with the Devils? And secondly, three cups as a player. What would a cup as an executive mean to you? Thanks. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I think it, as a player, you think you know it all, uh, you know, <laughs> And and so for me to spend three years in uh, in St. Louis under Doug Armstrong, that's you know one of probably the best GM in, in the league was was uh, really helpful uh, with Dave Taylor that was there, uh, Al McInnes, a bunch of guys. I, I learned so much. Get the opportunity to to, to run you know, uh, some teams in the World Championship and the Olympics uh, for Team Canada was all, also a big help. So I think. That experience really helps me out to, to be comfortable in, in knowing my role here in New Jersey and then try to try to do it uh, as good as I can and to try to be as effective uh, as possible also. And the other question, listen, I, I left St. Louis in uh, 2010 and they won the Stanley Cup. So I was not happy. I, I pulled the trigger too quick there in St. Louis. So I can't wait to, uh, to try to be the try to win a Stanley Cup here with uh, with, with the Devils again. Thank you, Mark. I see we have a hand raised for iPhone. If there's a question there, please identify yourself and go ahead and ask the question. They're still on mute. Okay, we'll pass along. We'll switch over. We'll go to Sebastian Boucher. Go ahead, Sebastian. 
Thank you, Pete. Euh, merci, Martin. Euh, écoute, je voulais savoir, ça représente quoi pour toi cette promotion-là, puis surtout le fait d'avoir un contrat de, de plusieurs années qui vient avec? Ouais, pour, pour moi, c'est pour aider la, la, la franchise le, le, le plus possible. Euh, la promotion, écoute, je, je travaille dans le hockey quand même depuis les deux dernières années, pas à 100 mais là, je, je vais être capable de m'y mettre un petit peu plus. Euh, c'est vraiment pour travailler la ligue au complet puis travailler des, 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 des différentes ligues aussi. Fait que, euh, je, suis, je suis vraiment content de, de, de cette promotion-là. Puis le, le fait des, des années, ce n'est pas quelque chose qui, qui bougeait beaucoup pour moi, dans, que ce soit un an ou trois ans ou cinq ans, ça ne change pas grand-chose. Je suis là pour aider l'organisation, aider Tom à, à, à pouvoir euh, faire sa job à, à plus au 100 qu'il pouvait le faire. Puis euh, on, a, on a une bonne équipe en entour de nous autres. C'est pas juste moi plus tard, mais on a Dan McKinnon, on a, on a énormément, on a Al Santilli. On a bien du, ben, ben du monde qui, qui vont travailler là-dessus aussi. Tu as eu un passage à Saint-Louis, mais tu en as parlé en anglais. Écoute, aux yeux de tout le monde, c'est naturel de te voir avec les Devils. Euh, pour toi, ça doit l'être aussi. De, ça doit être un « no doubt » en anglais là, que de te joindre comme ça aux Devils et de gravir les échelons, les échelons avec eux. Non, c'est sûr que j'ai adoré mon temps à travailler avec, avec les Blues. Euh, J'habite encore à Saint-Louis. Euh, Je n'habite pas ici au New Jersey. Euh, puis je suis vraiment... J'ai apprécié l'opportunité qu'ils m'ont donnée, mais je pense que normalement, le, si je devrais être ici, toute, toute ma vie s'est passée ici. Euh, mes enfants ont grandi ici, tous mes amis ou presque sont, 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 de, sont du New Jersey. Puis je, je connais l'environnement ici des, des fans, les, les expectations qu'ils peuvent avoir. Euh, C'est euh, pour ça que je suis content d'être ici et de, de mettre un plus gros commitment de, de, avec l'équipe. Merci beaucoup, Martin. Excuse-moi de mon français. Là, je me demande en français. <rire> C'était très bon. C'est très bon. <rire> Thank you, Sebastian. We'll go to Anthony Fusilli of MSG Networks. Go ahead, Fuge. Hi, Marty. Congratulations. Um, just wondering, you know, you were part of a young devil team. What do you think about the youth of this devil team right now and how they're performing? Well, it's exciting. You know, I think these these young guys uh, are no longer really young. You know, they, they, they got a few years under their belt now. And, and just to see them uh, perform in, you know, every game, being a little more consistent from game in, game out. Uh, it's been nice. It's been nice to watch in the first part of the season here that there's no doubt, you know, they, these guys are. They're fun to watch, um, you know, as, as management for us, you know, we, we try to put a, the best team possible. We've, we've tweaked it in the last few years and, uh, you know, it's paying off right now. So hopefully we'll, we'll be able to keep it up. Thank you. Thank you, Fuge. We'll try one more time to the iPhone user. If you want to take your phone off mute and ask a question. No, we'll skip ahead. Follow up from Amanda Stein, NewJerseyDevils.com. Go ahead, Amanda. Marty, how much was um, starting to build the new goaltending department part of this transition for you to where you are now and just how important that was to sort of get your feet wet with the organization in that kind of way? Yeah, you, you know what? It, it's something that when I was with the Blues, I was talking a lot to Doug Armstrong about and we were never able to put it together. And so when... You know, I, I got to the hockey side a couple of years ago. I kind of mentioned it to, to, to Fitzy about, you know, I think this is something that, that, that really should be really important for the organization just because, you know, it's it's hard. You know, you go through the free agency market, you overpay for people and you have to grow them within. And so to have a department that solely just look on goalies, I think was an important part. And, you know, kind of give me the blessing to, to kind of put uh, Scott Clemenson in charge. And, you know, we're through there, we, we hired two goalie coaches. Not many teams have a goalie, a full-time goalie coach in the American Hockey League. We do. Um, Anders Nielsen's up in, uh, up in, uh, in Europe, in Sweden, uh, looking, looking out for us. Uh, and we have weekly meetings. And it, I think it's just an important, it might not pay off right now, but down the road, it's going to be a, an important factor in why we, we might have a leg up on different teams. You talked about having that discussion with Fitzy. Um, obviously, you kind of stepped into an advisor role when he was named interim GM. But how important has that relationship been? And what has it been like working with Fitzy, knowing that he's the type of guy who does like to hear everyone's opinion and then sort of formulate what he's going to do from there? Well, you know, 
it, it's been great. You know, at first, you know, he came in as an interim GM, and so he had to work into getting the you know the the trust of of the organization and the ownership to to get the full time job, and and he did. He did a great job, and uh, no, it's been great. I think he's he's really inclusive. You know, and, and so that's what's fun. That's what that's what kind of want me to stick around is like, he wants me to be here. He wants to, to hear what I have to say. He doesn't agree all the time and that's fine. You know, it's, we all have our own opinions. Uh, but you know, I, I, he's just so passionate, you know, yeah. he's never played for the devils, but you think he would have played for the devils the way he is, you know, and maybe it's loose fall. We should have maybe traded for him back then. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you mentioned the managing partners and I think that this is important to talk about too, just because, they have brought in a lot of really important people over the last few years and given the blessing, you know, even for yourself, how important have they been in sort of getting this franchise back to where you guys are right now? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's small steps, but you know, these guys are all in, uh, you know, Josh and David uh, have been tremendous to work with. Uh, they're hands on, they want to know what's going on and what we need and what sometimes what we should need, you know, and that's okay. They own the team. It's all good. Uh, but it, it's been fun. You know, it's, it's been a fun transition. Um, like I said, as a player, you don't see all that stuff. So when you're on the management side, it's, it's kind of cool to see how everything works. And, uh, you know, like we're, we're pretty fortunate, you know, they, they've given us the, uh, the green light here to, to, to build a championship team. And uh, we're trying to be on our way with that. Thanks, Marty. Thanks, Pete. Thank you, Amanda. Follow up to Dan Rosen, NHL.com. Marty, you, you said it before, as a player, you think you know everything, right? What have you learned as, a, as an executive that maybe has surprised you, shocked you, if you will? I mean, what is it now that you understand better because you're going into this role that you didn't know at all when you started in this kind of capacity with the Blues? Oof, where do you want me to start? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, obviously the, the, the salaries and, and the, you know, the, you know, the salary cap and the free agency and the timing that you have to have and, and the, the work you have to put in to worry about what's going to happen a year or two from now. Like players, you worried about the game you're playing. In the management, you worried about years down the road, your prospects in Europe, what's going on in Russia. You know, like name it. Like there's tons of different things that that you worry about or you have to think about that as a player, you just you just play hockey, you stop a puck. I mean, that puck's not that hard to stop compared to managing a team, put it this way. Interesting. Thanks, man. Thank you, Dan. Our last question. We'll go back to Guillaume LaFrancois. Go ahead, Guillaume. Oui, uh, bonjour, Martin. Euh, mmh. J'avais une petite question de suivi sur, euh, sur Roberto Luongo, mais juste avant une petite chose, la, la dernière question euh, m'a intrigué un petit peu, euh, ce que tu disais par rapport à, aux différences entre jouer et puis gérer. Euh, si je te demandais entre, euh, entre justement un rôle comme joueur, ce que, ce, tu sais, quand tu étais gardien numéro un versus un rôle de dirigeant, de quelle façon tu penses que, as plus de, que tu sens que tu as le plus de contrôle sur ce qui se passe avec l'équipe? Écoute, c'est sûr que qu'en étant un gardien de but, c est, c est, c est, c est ta performance va, va vraiment changer quelque chose qui va arriver demain. Euh, quand quand tu es dans le management, c'est quelque chose qui, que tes décisions que tu prends en ce moment, tu, ça ne sera peut-être pas affecté en ce moment, ça peut l'être dans un an ou deux. C'est la grosse différence. Il, y a beaucoup plus de, il faut plus que tu mettes ta tête à travers de, les décisions que tu prends parce que ça peut, il peut avoir des grosses conséquences. Gagner ou perdre une game, ça ne change rien. Dans, 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 tu sais, ça peut dans la façon des, des finales et toute la quitte, là. mais à la, fin, à la fin de la journée, c'est ça la grosse différence, c'est que les joueurs sont capables de penser qu'est-ce qui se passe en ce moment, nous autres, il faut penser à qu ce qui va se passer dans le futur en plus du présent. OK, parfait. Euh, c'est dans ça, il y a Roberto Luongo qui va autant de renommer cette fin de semaine. Euh, oui. J'aimerais juste savoir un petit peu euh, ce que, ce que, comment tu as vu aller un petit peu sa carrière. Puis, je, pense, je pense que ça, ça, ça date de longtemps. Vous avez deux arénas pas trop loin l'un de l'autre <rire> à Montréal. <rire> la, 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 mienne, la mienne, il y a, il y a plus de sièges, right? <rire> <rire> Non, Écoute, je, je suis content pour lui. Je pense qu'il il, il mérite énormément. Il a eu une très belle carrière. Écoute, moi puis lui, on a grandi, je pense même pas à un kilomètre euh, de nos maisons qu'on a grandi à Saint-Léonard. Euh, on a eu le même coach de gardien de but, Mario Barry, dans le temps, euh, avec Montréal Bourassa. Euh, puis j'ai joué avec lui aux Olympiques, euh, à la Coupe du Monde, toute la quête. Fait que non, c'est un gardien de but qui, 
que j'ai toujours admiré. J'avais du fun à jouer contre lui. Euh, puis euh, tout, tout qu ce qui se passe dans, dans sa vie en ce moment, il le mérite. C'est quoi l'impact que tu penses qu'il y a eu sur, sa, sur la plus jeune génération? Écoute, moi, j'ai regardé à Patrick Roy quand j'étais jeune. Il bon, y a des joueurs qui ont regardé à moi quand, quand je jouais dans le national. Puis je suis sûr que des jeunes Québécois ont regardé à Roberto Longo. C'est dur de mettre une, une valeur sur, sur comment il a pu affecter le monde, mais c'est sûr qu'il l'a fait. Parfait, merci. Plaisir. Thank you, everyone, and merci to all those who joined us this afternoon. And congratulations to Marty once again. Have a great rest of the day.